We begin with breaking news from Elizabeth City. Protesters have violated a curfew that went into effect at 8 o'clock. Elizabeth and Water Streets, as you can see, are clear now. The protesters cleared out just moments ago. Mm -hmm. This is the seventh night that they had protests going on following the shooting death of Andrew Brown Jr. last Wednesday by Pasquotank County deputies. At Center News Science, Brett Hall is live in Elizabeth City. And Brett, it was a tense scene for a bit earlier. Yeah, this just cleared up. As you can see, cars coming through now, passing, passing into Camden County for the first time since 7 o'clock. This bridge is open for regular traffic. And as you said, tense moments. Let's get to some of that video. If you were watching Wave News 10 at 10 of Fox 43 that you saw of police moving in, several protesters, and I say several because it couldn't be more than 30, remained in the intersection. Uh, past 9 o'clock, yes, there's an 8 o'clock deadline. A lot of them stayed until 9 o'clock, but then organizers of the protests, they left at 9, but some remained, including a pastor who sat down in the middle of the roadway. And police, for two hours, uh, sounded on their megaphones that there is an unlawful gathering, you need to leave, you can be arrested, charged with violating the curfew, as well as impeding traffic on a highway. Uh, they remained. Police showed up in riot gear from Water Street and moved as one unit slowly up to the intersection, eventually into the intersection. They likely made eight arrests, from what I counted, eight arrests. Of course, we don't know the specific charges yet at this point. There were warnings that they would also deploy a uh, non lethal chemical uh, force. That never happened. That m once the police made several arrests, there were still other people on the perimeter around. However, they then just left. They, they arrested around, like I said, eight people, and then they left with the remaining protesters taunting them as they went down Water Street. But after that brief taunting, they, they all dispersed. Uh, the big issue people have had here is that they say for seven days things have been peaceful. And by, by all purposes, it remained peaceful in that there was never any property destroyed, anybody uh, threatened. There was certainly taunting, uh, tense moments between police and protesters, but I never saw any fists thrown or projectiles thrown. Um, the protesters really want to know why the curfew had to be implemented when at 9 o'clock every night of those protests, people have left peacefully. So tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, the president of the NAACP chapter here, as well as a community activist that has taken the lead on many of the protests, they're going to go to City Hall. They want to speak with the city manager and the mayor who made the decision to implement the 8 o'clock curfew, hoping that, well, the, their best case scenario would get it be lifted because they don't believe any of this would have happened tonight if there was no curfew. They said they were here to prove a point. Or have the curfew at least go to 9, 9.30 when they were leaving anyway because they said that would be fine with them because then people that were not here for their movement and not following their directions as the protest would leave as well. So I know that's a lot coming out. It was a busy day out here with a lot of other developments in this story. But the bottom line is everything's open now. Several arrests occurred. However, you could still say it was peaceful all about. I never saw police use force. It seemed like most people were not nobody was resisting arrest they were taken into the transport vans and they will be charged and of course we'll have the very latest on that tomorrow as well we're live in Elizabeth City Brett Hall 10 on your side Brett